What's up, guys? Thanks for being patient with me. I know it's been a little bit since we've had Permasan Invitational content, but we are back in action. It is Permasan Invitational, and we are three or four days later than we intended to be, but this is round six content. They did get an extension, and to be fair, with very good reason. Uh, M Dragon has been open about the fact that he has been dealing with COVID. He himself, not just a family member or whatever, but he himself has COVID and he has had symptoms and it's been a real bad week and change for him. So obviously I and everybody else involved with this tournament sincerely wishes M Dragon uh, the fastest and most complete recovery possible. Obviously that takes precedence over Mons. Uh, so for that reason, and especially with, I mean, how close these guys are to the money, the winner of this match does have guaranteed money in this tournament. We just, we were okay giving the extension. Normally I'm, I'm pretty stingy about it. Really hate giving extensions just at all. And it just opens up the floodgates. If you give it to one guy, you got to give it to another guy. Uh, but I mean, 2020 is a weird year. And if the dude's got COVID and is feeling like crap, it's okay to give him a couple extra days. So here he is. He feels well enough to play, and this is a doozy of a matchup. Uh, he's going to be against his countryman, who he's known for a long time and teamed with before, and I assume there's some level of friendship here. These are two old-school guys who were both already playing Mons back when I started playing Mons a decade ago. Uh, so this is a real good one. Uh, Malekith against M Dragon. Malekith actually wasn't even initially invited to this tournament, not for any you know personal reason or whatever. We just... You know, we thought he was like a borderline guy. He was, you know, 34th, 35th, whatever on our list. And we invited somebody else. But we had some last-minute roster shakeups. He got in. And evidently that was a good decision because he's gone very far, no matter what happens. I mean, he obviously earned his place here and has had a great run. But like I said, uh, the winner here is guaranteed money in this tour. So it's going to be Solwind, the winner here, and then a yet-to-be-determined player rounding up our top three. So a lot on the line, and these guys definitely know each other and have for a very long time, so it's going to make it interesting. But enough of the pregame stuff. Uh, we have, man, this has been by far the most popular. We just we just have sand teams from both, uh, very similar ones. In fact, they, well, there are some differences, but the, uh, the sand plus Keldeo is what they're both opting for here. Let's just get into it. Malekith on the bottom, Dragon on the top. We have lead Scizor getting immediately scalded but not burnt. And it's going to go with Natural Gift, which, to be honest, I don't know what that move does. So hopefully it's really good and it does awesome things. I don't know what the fuck that move does. Somebody tell me in the comments. Either way, uh, Keldeo here is going to protect. And Grass Knot coming down from Lati, which, as we see, doesn't have lefties. But he's obviously not Choice Locked either, since he switches from Grass Knot to Dragon Pulse. And now Scizor comes in on the Amoongus, blanking the Sludge Bomb, so a free switch in for Malekith. But he's going to double back, actually, to Titar here as Hidden Power comes down. And even with a crit, the damage there is pathetic, 6%. Titar scares it out, but does not Pursuit. He instead opts for Rocks. Drill here can just Rapid Spin if that's what he wants to do. Instead, he goes for the aggressive route, goes for Earthquake, nailing the opposing Keldy over 78%. And that, of course, doesn't have lefties either, so it's really low, and the sand is ticking away. Here comes Amoongus. There is a Calm Mind from Keldeo. How about that? But it's down to just 4%, so it would better make it count. Here comes Titar and Hyper Beam. Okay. Weird game so far. We have a non-RBY Hyper Beam, boys. Uh, is that special in this gen? Does that go with Calm Mind? Uh, I have no idea what's going on. Malekith is on another level. I don't know what Natural Gift does, and I don't know that I've ever seen Hyper Beam in a competitive game outside of RBY. So this is why I shouldn't be narrating Black White, but I hope you guys are having fun with the tour anyway. Nevertheless, here comes the Lando, and there's the Intimidate. Oh, he was already, I was going to say, why was he higher? Why isn't he minus one? I know why. Alrighty. Man, I, this is the worst black-white narration of my life. I don't have a fucking clue what half the things do, or or what the moves are, or any of that. But, uh, like I said, hope you guys are having fun. Gra uh, Grass Knot, Dragon Pulse, Earthquake. Malekith is just on another level. These are just funky sets. Obviously, I know what those moves do. Earthquake, Dragon Pulse, blah, blah, blah. 
But what what the fuck is this set? Grass Knot, Dragon Pulse, Earthquake, Hidden Power. Just, yeah, four attack, mixed Lati, apparently. I, M Malekith is on another level, I guess. Or I'm really just that dumb, but I just... Th these sets are, are wild to me. I've watched plenty of Black White, and these are not things that I usually see. I also have no clue who's winning this game. It, it feels really close. Maybe M Dragon's a little bit ahead since both the... The Scizor and the Lati are in bad shape for Malekith, but I just, I have no clue what's going on. I can't emphasize that enough. Malekith does take the lead here. It was superpower. I know what that move does. Here is rapid spin, and it's just superpower again. I can't believe it does that much after the reduction. 83%. Uh, Bullet Punch going to come up short, however. Earthquake, obviously, good enough. Brings us to a 4-4. Four to four. And here is the Mixed Lati with its full set revealed. Dragon Pulse, because why not? Nothing really wants to come in and deal with that for Dragon. He's going to go for the Double Protect, which is 50-50. He wins the coin flip. Hidden Power there obviously would have killed it, since it is HP Fire. And here comes T-Tower. That's just going to be immediately EQ'd down with the crit. Down that goes. Malekith takes the lead, 4-3. to three. Here comes Lando looking for revenge. U-turn, good enough. Dragon can't do anything to stop that. And options limited for Dragon. He's going to go to Excadrill, which of course gets lefties and then can protect for more lefties. Dual Chop avoided here. And the reason that he didn't protect that turn is he didn't want to give him a free Swords Dance. But the unlucky Dual Chop miss could come back to bite Malekith here. He's now relying on his Alakazam to take out the three remaining pokes for Dragon. Focus Blast there. Underwhelming. 14% resisted by the Amoongus. Now it's Drill. Psychic, big chunk, will not live another even after protecting lefties. And Psychic there, good enough. Two to two. Very back and forth this game. But here's the Lando who's going to be faster because of his scarf. Titar comes in. Massive chunk from Earthquake. Obviously not going to live another. Down that goes. And now we have a 1v2 situation. Alakazam against both the remainders. Earthquake, Sash, obviously going to survive. Psychic and the KO. 1v1 situation, full power going to be necessary, and he does not get it. Giga Drain going to be good enough, and M Dragon is going to take this game one that I totally followed and totally knew all the intricacies and all that. Let's move on. So Malekith here is going to choose the next tier, and he is going to opt to bring us to Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, where... Probably out of the three tiers available. Probably this is where Malekith has the biggest edge over Dragon. Uh, but we're going to find out. If Dragon wins this game or a theoretical game three, which would be ADV, he will be guaranteed in the money in this tour alongside Soulwind, which is a, a pretty loaded potential final matchup that we could get. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Malekith here bringing us to the DPP. Perhaps he can send us to a game three in M Dragon's bread and butter ADV. Here is the Gen 4 game, and Malekith again is going to be on the bottom for continuity. Dragon's on the top. Zapdos and Heatran, respectively, they're both fine with the matchup. Thunderbolt and Magma Storm, massive damage for both. But of course, the Zapdos is trapped with the Storm, and now the Protect nonsense comes down. Malekith pr uh, predicts that, of course, and goes for Roost. Gets himself healthier than the Tran, at which point Dragon decides he doesn't like the matchup anymore. Gets out of the way. Swampert comes in no problem on the T-Bolt, but then he eats HP Grass, which is a problem. 97%. He gets Rocks up at least. And now Roserod comes in. Roserade, Roserod, Rosie O'Donnell, whatever you'd like it to be. The hazards continue here. There is U-Turn, but we have both Rocks and the Toxic Spikes up. Beneath Malekith's team, now regular spikes as well. So M-Dragon's established three different hazards. Swampert comes back in probably to just fodder itself. Yep, just about anything would do it there. Shadow Ball takes it out, and now Rachi comes in. So Pokemon advantage Malekith, however, hazard advantage massively for Dragon. Black Sludge and Lefties get swapped, so that is not the ideal trick in that situation at all. Shadow Ball comes down, and so does Fire Punch. Fair enough. Gengar doing just fine with those lefties. Starmie comes in at this point. It's going to instantly be down to 76%, now 64% after the hazards do their thing. 58%. Man, Starmie low before it even gets to do a damn thing. 
And now here comes Rotom, which, of course, with the Ghost Typing, is going to try to block a Rapid Spin that does not come. Catches him with Thunder Wave on the way in. Here comes Tyranitar, also suffering from the hazards. And he eats a Thunderbolt. Not that it does too, too much, but it all adds up. Titar before it gets to do a damn thing, down to 46%. Catches Rotom on the way out with a hefty pursuit, but doesn't kill that either. 89% is a lot, but it's not the whole shebang. There's Iron Head for the knockup, bringing us to 5-5. And Starmie at this point is going to reappear. We have a crucial turn coming up. And it's Body Slam and Recover. Interesting that he doesn't go for Iron Head there. I really thought that he would. He's going to go for it now. And now the Rapid Spin comes down. But man, that, that was a huge turn. That was the difference between whether or not he gets the flinch or not. And getting the flinch would have prevented... Those ra the rapid spin from coming down and removing all those hazards. So a big 60-40 there that M Dragon does not get the better end of. And therefore Malekith gets a crucial rapid spin off and gets himself right back in the game. M Dragon's advantage having all those hazards down, the three different layers. He had the spikes, the rocks, and the toxic spikes completely out the window. And now Malekith is right back in it. I don't know that he's in the driver's seat per se. We are looking at still a 5-4 to four advantage for M-Dragon. But M-Dragon would have been in a fantastic position had he gotten the cooperative Iron Head flinch there. But it's actually double rocks from Dragon. If you recall, the Swampert had it as well. But now Rachi's going to go for it. So we have double rocks. So M-Dragon bound and determined to keep hazards down. We've got ourselves a 4-4 four to four as Rosie O'Donnell sacrifices herself. And I'm really not sure who's winning this game. This one's pretty close, but the Infernape looks very dangerous in my opinion. Uh, it can just nail the Heatran with a fighting move. It can roast the Rachi with a fire move. Uh, I mean, the Rotom dies to anything at 5%. Infernape, even though it is getting low itself, looks very offensively dangerous to M-Dragon. And he's going to have to be very careful about that. To be fair, neither player has shown their last poke. Uh, but I really think the ape is a big threat. So there's Shadow Ball and Iron Head, respectively. Rachi has to be careful here also. Well, certainly with that, big critical hit for Malekith is going to make this a lot easier. I was going to say he can get revenge killed by the Infernape, but that's going to speed things up. Rachi's the last poke for M-Dragon, and it does manage after eating a massive Shadow Ball to kill the Gengar, but... Malekith, I think, has it now. Yep, last poke Scizor, which he's brought two games in a row, is almost certainly going to do it. He shows the bullet punch. M-Dragon concedes. Scizor going to clean this up without too much effort. Malekith seems to be a big Scizor fan, having brought it in both the black-white and the DPP game. One of those worked out. One of them didn't. That means that we are going to a decisive Game 3 in M-Dragon's bread and butter ADV to decide who is going to have guaranteed cash money in this tour versus who is going to have to work for it. Remember, this is the upper bracket, so the losing player here is not eliminated. They will simply have to win two more matches in order to get some cash money in this tour, whereas the winner here is just Dunzo having to do that. No matter what happens, even if they lose every single game from here on out, they've got that guaranteed real money in their pocket. So let's see what happens. Game 3 ADV. As much as I've been hyping up M-Dragon, we all know he's the grandfather. He's the godfather. He's the granddaddy of ADV. Uh, Malekith has been playing ADV for a hell of a long time. I don't know if he's necessarily as known for it or you know, such an esteemed builder the way that M-Dragon is. But Malekith is no slouch in ADV and he is highly experienced in that tier. So as much as I've been hyping up Dragon, do not underestimate Malekith in this third game. Malekith has looked good all set. Would not be surprised if this game was perhaps closer than some of you guys may think that it's going to be. But let's find out together. Here is the third game for the guaranteed cash money between the two Spaniard countrymen, Malekith and M-Dragon. We switch the sides for continuity. Malekith does not like his opening matchup of Salamence against Metagross, and he gets out of the way. Starmie eats a Meteor Mash. Surf and Earthquake, respectively. Starmie getting low, but he can just recover it off. And that's what he'll do. 
and earthquake there, keeping the pressure on, fishing for a crit, yada yada, doesn't find it, at which point M Dragon is going to switch over to Blissey on the recover, so the Starmie ends up no harm, no foul, full health. We end up with Bliss on Bliss, becomes Metagross on Bliss, Ice Beam there doesn't matter unless it finds a 10% freeze, which did not, and out of the way it goes, Starmie is once again the answer, Earthquake here, decent chunk, but this very well may be a bulky star, might even be a T-Wave star, we don't know, we've only seen Surf and Recover, Rapid Spin is almost certainly there, just a matter of what the last move is, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, or T-Wave all make sense to me, I'm thinking T-Wave though, just based on what I've seen so far, call that a hunch, but I don't know, well it makes even more sense now, right, you want to paralyze things to support your, your Mence, which we don't know what kind of Mence it is, and your Heracross here, he gets him with a big rock slide, even after Intimidate, and then he gets out of the way. Dragon Claw comes down at this point. Neither player has revealed the T-Tower, so there's no sand right now. Bulky things stay bulky. Starmie having a good old time. He's shrugging off everything and recovering, and not having a lot of trouble staying at a hundo. But Blissey actually shows the surprise Thunderbolt here. That's going to make Malekith get out of the way. He goes to Hera, which no lefties. Focus Punch, called by M-Dragon, great call there, not afraid, stays in, zaps it, but he's not Choice Ban locked either, switches it up to Brick Break for the one-hit KO, this is actually, I think, a Black Belt Heracross here, and he pump fakes M-Dragon into thinking it's CB locked, but alas, it is not, and it's going to lull M-Dragon into staying in with his Bliss, thinking he can disrupt Focus Punch, but he's going to get out mind gamed. He's going to stay and go for Thunderbolt again. He's going to get one hit KO'd from the Black Belt Heracross via Brick Break. Pretty ingenious for Malekith. That's the stuff that wins tournament games. And Malekith going to take the lead now after trading with Lax via Boom. That Blissey kill was crucial for Malekith. And now Counter Bliss comes down. Things going from bad to worse for M Dragon. All of a sudden, just 25 turns in, he finds himself two Pokemon behind his countrymen. He's trying to sit up, uh, set up. Jeez, yeah, he's probably sitting up, I hope. But he's trying to set up his Coon here, and there is no Tyranitar in sight, so Coon is going to be difficult pending a Boom to kill. And the only thing that can have Boom for Malekith is the Gengar, which has only shown Thunderbolt so far. But CB Mence, certainly with a critical hit, is going to be good enough. And M Dragon in shambles now. He's not conceding, and he hasn't shown his last poke, but it better be something amazing because, man, is he in some trouble here. And he's going to whiff the brick break on the switch. Not that it would have mattered against Gengar unless he had crit the Dragon Claw, whatever it might have been. Last poke doll, I suspect, is not a sweeper. Malekith looking to take this ADV game in fairly one sided fashion, actually. To the surprise of many, given how good M-Dragon is, Malekith looking real good to take this here. And it's last move Ice Beam, so I'm wrong. It's not a T-Wave star. Ice Beam is going to be plenty good enough in this situation. And Dragon is out of here. Malekith, who was not even initially invited to this tour, is going to show ABR and I real clear that we made a mistake not inviting this man from the get-go making it very clear that we screwed up. He's going to get the victory. He's going to be in the winner's bracket undefeated, and he is going to have guaranteed money in this tournament no matter what happens. He and Soulwind are going to have to fight it out at some point over the next couple weeks to figure out who it is that has the better seed and has the massive advantage of still being in the winner's bracket when the grand finals come along. But like I said, no matter what, even if Malekit doesn't win a single game for the rest of the tour, he's got that cash money in pocket, and that is awesome. Great showing for him in this tournament pre-SPL. Probably makes his stock go up quite a bit. Somebody's going to buy this guy and have him be an effective team member if he signs up. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. In the meantime, like I said, this is upper bracket, so M Dragon is not eliminated. He's going to drop down to the lower bracket. He's going to fight against Roses. And then the winner of M Dragon and Roses is going to fight against the winner of the also yet to be played Finchinator versus Star. That will be the fourth place match. But, like I said, in real time, Raw caught up. None of that has happened yet, but I will certainly bring it to you 
when it does. If you've enjoyed the tour, hit that damn thumbs up button and hit that damn subscribe button. Makes a big difference to me. Would really appreciate it. More content coming soon.